Right, so let us get started and uh, introduction to structural equation model. Uh, let me start by mentioning that when we talk about structural equation modeling, structural equation modeling is nothing but a technique of regression analysis, right? So when we say, or when we use the word structural equation, okay? Essentially what we are implying is that we are going to do regression testing. We are going to do regression analysis. So that part of structural equation modeling is pretty common to what we know about or what analysis we have been performing when we were doing regressions. So those basics are going to be similar. However, uh, structural equation modeling does something significantly more uh, than regression analysis, and that is it takes into account the uh, kind of measures that we use in uh, in social sciences and in the discipline of management. So I'll try to explain these ideas as we go forward. Now, there are two kinds of sciences that we know of, or broadly we talk about two, two the streams of science, one we call as the soft science, another one which we call as the hard science. Hard science, uh, well, this is something that we studied in our college, in our schools, uh, physics, chemistry, maths, biology, right? These are uh, sciences that we say are hard sciences. And why do we say these are hard sciences? Because the kind of ideas that uh, that we uh, the kind of constructs the kind of variables that we talk about in hard sciences they are very very uh, tangible they are very very uh, seeable they are very very perceptible in the sense that you can if I were to say what is speed in in physics we say speed is nothing but distance covered in a particular amount of time you take the ratio of distance traveled divide, uh, and divided by, by time, you get speed, right? So these are variables that are, that are easier, that are easy to uh, see, they are easy to measure, they are easy to actually capture. Whereas soft science is a discipline which is essentially talking about feelings behaviors and attitudes of individuals, right? Now, soft science is a discipline, is a, is a stream of sciences where we engage in things that we don't see, that we are not able to see, right? So uh, these, we, we use the, the terminology that we use in uh, social science is what we call as a latent construct. Latent construct is a construct which is hidden, which is not perceptible. It is, uh, you cannot really hold it in your hand. These are simply ideas. And we have to sort of try and capture these, these ideas and use it in our science. Now, before I go forward, let me give you here, let me pause here and give you a definition of science. Now, what is science and what differentiates science from quack, right? Science from guesswork. Science is something that is evidence-based. That is, science is something that you do with accurate measurements, okay? Science is something that can be repeated. It, this is a very, very important aspect of science that you should be able to repeat it and you should be able to measure it up accurately. You should measure the variables. You should be able to measure the constructs that you are working on to uh, accu uh, accurately. So up to, up to several decimal places as I have written. That is what really uh, uh, qualifies 
science and and all of us we are students of uh, we are students of uh, management so management is a is a kind of a soft science if we were to say we are to do we are doing science well we will have to do something similar we will have to capture our constructs properly we will have to measure them accurately and we should be able to do things in a controlled repeatable environment this is where soft sciences become difficult right and the moment we say this is this is how we define science well our discipline is actually quite complicated in that respect why what makes it complicated well we can't really a lot of times the the phenomena that we are trying to study is it is very difficult to start and stop let me give you an example if you were to do a study of leadership okay you were to understand how leaders impact employee performance how leaders impact uh, subordinate uh, attitudes and and behaviors when you cannot start and stop leadership at at any time right it is very very difficult to say leadership leaders you stop being leader today you start being leader tomorrow and we will see how you impact the outcome so it is a lot of times it is even very difficult to start we we don't uh, it is very difficult to do experiments in soft science uh, uh a lot of times there are multiple variables that may be impacting your your outcomes so uh, i remember when i was getting introduced to management as a discipline and and we were doing uh, courses on econometrics and and so on uh when we used to study in in economics and in in other non management non core management disciplines we used to we used to look at r squares which were like uh 0.8 0.7 0.9 anything less than 0.6 or 7 r square well that study was said to be not very good because the r the explained variance is is only about 60% or 50% or so but when i came to ob and hr which was my my discipline of training we used to be very happy uh, getting r squares of 0.2 or 0.3 <laughs> if you could get a r square of of 0.5 well those studies were said to be wonderful because you are explaining so much of variance that means your variable is really important and so on so a lot of times what happens is the moment we start talking about behaviors and and attitudes and perceptions and those kinds of stuff there are so many variables that can impact your outcome so we don't even know and and uh, uh, a lot of times you don't know a lot of times it is very difficult to even control those Really. and the last which is again very important is you may even find hard to decide what a variable is how do you really measure the uh, what i'm what i've tried to write here is what a variable means uh, how do you measure your construct and that is where the big problem really lies again let me give you an example here we have all grown up hearing about intelligence right we have uh, and management i am sure each one of you you would have heard about motivation or engagement right these ideas they are so common in our uh, management uh, uh, language but if if you were to just pause and reflect can you tell me what does intelligence look like has anybody seen intelligence what is it can you really sort of hold it in your hand and say this is intelligence can you hold motivation in your hand and say this is what motivation is can you say what engagement looks like these are very very difficult uh, 
not really difficult, but these are very, very abstract ideas. These are just some concepts that we use in order to make sense of the phenomena that we are trying to uh, we are trying to study, right? So we don't see these constructs. We don't we don't hold them in our in our hand. We don't really know what these constructs. These are only our definitions. These are just mere conceptualizations that a group of researchers have agreed uh, agreed to. So we all believe that this is how motivation should be defined. And so we believe in it. So we don't know the construct. And then if you were to do any research, you need to also quantify it. And that is where the measurement aspect comes in. And this issue brings in a lot of problems when you are going to test your relationships. And structural equation modeling is a method that can help you avoid or maybe take into account these imperfections that are associated with these soft sciences or these measures that we are talking about. So again, I've just tried to sort of uh, give you another example, social frustration. And this is not just one idea. There are many ideas. Uh, there are so many. The moment you talk about attitudes, perceptions, uh, feelings, these become very, very hazy. And the first question for a researcher is, how should I operationalize this concept, right? Before you even want to test a relationship of social frustration with a particular outcome, leadership with a particular outcome, or motivation with a particular antecedent or a particular outcome, you even need to, your first difficulty is how do I operationalize this concept? How do I measure? And measurement is critical. Measurement is absolutely important for science. If we are to do good science, if we have to do good management research, measurement is absolutely necessary because you need numbers. You need numbers in order to test your, your uh, scientific relationship. You need to perform statistical computations and for that measurement is absolutely critical. And therefore, I have written that all scientists have to solve this task of operationalization, operationalizing their concepts. And this task of operationalizing is more difficult and less exact in soft sciences. So there was a famous psychologist who once remarked uh, that God has given physicists all the easy problems. So obviously that person was trying to uh, be happy and, and sort of uh, take pride in, in what he was, was doing. But the point that he was trying to make is that the God has given physicists the easy problems. And at least the easy thing is that they know what their variables are. The easy part of their research is, the easy part of their, uh, their work is that they know what, sh what is their concept, what is the measure, and what is it that they have to uh, capture. For us, as, as psychologists, as, as social scientists, people who are working in these uh, disciplines, our first task is how do we capture or how do we measure our concept. And research, as I have been talking about for the last 10 minutes or so, our, our discipline, uh, you look at across disciplines, structural equation modeling today has become not just popular in OBHR, marketing, uh, communication strategy disciplines, but I see more and more papers also being done in information uh, science, uh, ICT, even behavioral finance, uh, economics, behavioral economics. So wherever there is, there are these ideas of of uh, uh, again attitudes, 
risk-taking behavior, for example, right? Wherever these kinds of ideas come in, you have to sort of uh, try and see what can you do to uh, manage or, or how do you analyze relationships between constructs in these. So measurements, uh, uh, as I as I mentioned in the previous slide, also measurement is critical because you need to represent numerically what your concept is, and these numbers are needed to test the theoretical hypothesis. The the hypothesis testing, uh, the statistical analysis is all based on uh, based on numbers, and our task is to somehow capture assign some numbers to the, the constructs that we are working with. No matter how abstract, no matter how hazy, no matter how intangible these constructs are, we need to assign these numbers. And then we need to perform analysis of these. Okay, 